welcome to Jenny Fitstar, your go-to fitness channel for active seniors and beginners. Today is going to be a great workout. It's going to all be inclusive to help with your golf swing. We're going to work on power and strength and flexibility. It's going to be a two-part video where you're going to get my expertise on how to do the exact exercises you need for this and then we will also get the help from my father who was a golfer at North Carolina State University and went on to coach for 30 plus years, including professional golfer Webb Simpson. So grab your golf club, grab your mat. We're gonna go through a bunch of great things to help with your golf swing. So enjoy. Okay, so the most important thing before you go out and play golf is to always, always, always warm up just like we do in a video for another type of exercise. The easiest thing to do is just to do a light walk for five to 10 minutes. And while you're walking, just lots of arm swings, vertically, horizontally, and just kind of warm up a little bit before you take that first stance. Okay, so when you break down a golf swing, there are certain components that we need to work on and what's actually needed for a very successful golf swing. The first thing we need is increased rotational mobility. The second thing is an increased shoulder range of motion and mobility. The third thing is leg strength. We need increased leg strength. The fourth thing is increased leg power. And power just simply means the ability to store and then release energy. The fifth thing is increased core stability. We need to be strong around our belt, our abs and our back. And the last thing is increased spinal mobility, back mobility. The key muscle groups that we need to work on are one, our gluteus maximus, which is just our butt. The second one is our pec major, simply called our chest. The third one is our latissimus dorsi, which is runs through the back, those big triangle muscles in our back. The fourth thing is our core. Think of it like a belt, our abs and lower back. And the fifth thing are our forearm muscles. So those are the things we're gonna focus on in our exercise program. Okay, y'all, now it's time to get started with your exercises. I have designed these as my top 10 strengthening exercises to help you with your golf swing. The first eight are in a standing position and the last two are in a lying down position. We're gonna do 20 times each and just follow me. What we want to start with is a standing position with a golf club. So grab your golf club, and the first thing we're going to do are bent over rows. Now, I want you to get an underhand grip so your palms are facing towards me. And I'm going to turn to the side just so you can see what I'm doing. But the second thing we need to do is bend over so that our back is flat and we reach our arms forward. The exercise now is to bring the elbows back and forward, back and forward. Keeping that nice arch in our back, keeping our back flat and pulling our elbows back. Like I said, we're gonna go 20 times each, nice and slow, follow with me. Eight, nine, squeezing our shoulder blades together as we pull back. We're halfway there. 
Great. So we're getting that nice thoracic mobility, shoulder mobility, four. And I'm going to turn to the side so you can see what I'm doing. Five. My back is straight. Palms are up. Lifting as high as I comfortably can. Eight. Nine. Ten. You're doing great. So we're halfway there. Keep going. Nice and slow. And we're breathing. Thirteen. Fourteen. 15, 16, 17, good, three more, 18, 19, and 20, and let's go ahead and stand up and get a little bit of stretch again. All right, we're going to move into our next exercise. It's a rotational movement. And what we want to do is we want to put the golf club behind our back and we want to pull it up so that it rests in between the crease of our elbow. Now that we're here, we're going to twist to each side, opening up our hips side to side. And to be fair to each side, we want to do 20 to each side. So just go back and forth at your own pace. If this makes you dizzy at all, you would just keep your head looking forward. If you can tolerate it, go ahead and move the next side to side. This should feel really good to the hips. Getting a mobility in the back and the knees. We're halfway there. Great. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Great job. The next exercise we need to grab some sort of weighted ball or any type of ball that you have. Okay, our next one involves some power, power moves, power squats. We need that to be able to pull through that golf swing. I'm using a six pound weighted ball. Whatever you have at home will work. I just need you to be safe with it, right? We don't need to be throwing weights down on your nice new tile floor. So just find something that you can throw up and down. So what I'm gonna do is I hold the ball in my hand. Now it's gonna obviously go out of my screen, but you're gonna understand it. I'm going to squat and then throw and then catch. Squat, throw, catch. Squat, throw, catch. All right, so join with me. We'll do 20 times. And we're working on power. Power of the arms, power of the legs. We're halfway there. Five more, you can do it. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Great job. All right, let's work on that core stability, a little bit of rotation. So what we're gonna do is put our hand on our hip, the other hand on our head. My elbow is out. And I'm going to take my elbow to my knee, okay? So let's try it. Elbow to knee and out. Elbow to knee and out. My legs come in kind of across the body. Really working my core. Beautiful work. So we're halfway there. Ten more. Five. 
Five more, make them good. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Beautiful work. So now we just need to go to the other side. Our hand is on our hip. Our other hand's behind our head. We go elbow to knee and down. Now that I'm doing this, I realize this is really working balance too. You're doing good, so we are halfway there. Let's get 10 more good ones. You can do it. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Great. All right, let's move on. These are simply just hip circles. We're going to put our hands on our hips and we are going to roll them in a big circle. Now, the more I bend over, and lean back, the bigger my hip circle is. So do what you feel comfortable with. We're gonna do 10 in one direction and 10 in the other. So we have eight, nine, and 10. Now let's reverse. Around, really sticking the hips out. Side, side, forward and back. Great, five more. Two more. And one more. Good. All right, the next two exercises, a kettlebell would be ideal. If you don't have a kettlebell, just grab one heavy weight. This is 10 pounds, but you use what you're comfortable with. The first one is a chest press. I'm gonna hold the kettlebell to my chest. This definitely can be done with a, with a weight. And I'm just gonna push and pull. And what I'm working are my pecs. I need good chest strength. Four, five, six, seven, good. Keep going. This can be done in a seated position if needed. We're halfway there. Keep it strong. Five more good ones. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Great. All right, let's move to my second kettlebell exercise. I call these, I call them snatches. Um, Squat swings you might hear, but what we want to do is get our legs hip shoulder width apart and we're going to swing the kettlebell. As we come up, we snatch it up and I'm going to stop right about halfway to keep my shoulders nice and safe. So we go down, snatch, down, snatch. Now, we keep moving. Good snatches. Really push up, use the power. Halfway there.
10 more. Back is straight. Five more. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Nice work, y'all. All right. Um, the last two are going to be on the floor. So grab your mat and meet me down on the floor. All right, let's get our last two exercises in. The first one on the ground is simply a bridge. And to do that, you're going to lie all the way down on your back, bend your knees, feet together, hands and arms by your side, palms up. We're going to push down with our feet, lifting the hips up as high as we can and lowering. So it looks like this, up and down, and up and down. So we're going to do 20 of these, keeping our knees together. Strengthening our glutes. Halfway there, 10 more. Go at your own pace. So we have five more. 16, 17, 18, 19, one more, and 20. And you can give your legs a big hug because it just feels good after this. All right, the final exercise is on the ground, but it's in a side lying position. So you're going to want to lie on your side. And what we're going to do is straighten the bottom leg and your top knee is going to hang over till it hits the ground. This is for your thoracic mobility, the upper spine movement. What you do is you take your top arm, you touch the ground in front of you, and then you try and touch the ground on the other side. And it may or may not hit the ground, and that would be okay. You go as far as you can. And it just feels good, doesn't it? It's a great stretch, great strengthening exercise. And we're going to 20. My wall is hitting me, keeping me from going all the way down, but that's okay. We're making do. So we're halfway there. Go at your own speed. What speed feels good to you? Five more good ones. Here we go. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Woo, I feel like I could just hit an awesome golf balls right now. <laughs> Let's go to the other side. You now know what to do. We're going to lie on your side. The bottom leg is straight. Your top leg, your knee comes forward. Your upper arm reaches up and you're going to touch the ground in front of you and then try and touch the ground behind you. Here and then here. So again, the wall was kind of stopping me. Don't stop. At the level I am, go as far back as you can comfortably. Should not be painful. But it is a strengthening exercise, so it should be challenging. You're doing great. So we're halfway done. All we have is 10 more, and then we will have completed our strengthening portion.
So we have five more. Let's make them really big, really good. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Very nice, y'all. Let's sit up safely. To do that, you want to make sure you stay on your side and then walk yourself up. All right, awesome work, y'all. We're going to move on to the stretching portion. Great job with the strengthening portion. Let's move to the stretching portion. I have about four or five really good stretches to do. First one is a cervical rotation stretch. We want to be able to move our neck effectively in a golf swing so that we don't tense up here, so that we don't compromise by doing some other movements. So to do that, we're going to move our head in a couple of different ways. The first one is simply turning it to one side. For me, I'm going to go to the left and hold. All of our stretches should be 30 seconds to a minute. And come back to the center. Our second stretch for the neck is a side bend. You're going to put your ear to your shoulder, relaxing the shoulder. Feel free to put your hand on your head to get a further, deeper stretch for our neck muscles. Drop the ear to the shoulder, hold it there with the shoulder relaxed. Feel free to put your hand on your head to give it a deeper stretch. And then when you come up, you're going to get nice and slowly up, out of your stretches slowly. All right, we also want to get a nice good chest stretch. And for this, you just simply need a doorway or a corner of a room. I personally like the doorway better because nothing stops you. Um, but if, for my filming purposes, this is what I have. So what you want to do is get into your corner or your doorway. You're going to put your hands on either side. Then I like to come up a little bit more. You're going to place one foot in front of the other. And then you're simply going to lean into the stretch until you feel it.
the arms nice and slowly. Okay, we're on our very last stretch, but we need to do this on the floor. So grab a mat, calm down, meet me here. We're gonna get on our stomach. When you're ready, you're gonna extend your right arm out to a T position, and then you're going to roll back onto that shoulder. And my top leg really has nowhere to go, so I like to get an extra stretch by bringing it behind the body and letting it fall down. And now we just <laughs> pretend to take a nap. It's a really good deep stretch for our shoulder. I know you can't really see what my shoulder's doing, but hopefully you followed the cues and are feeling the stretch on our shoulder. It's also a nice stretch for our IT band. And we wanna hold this stretch like all others, 30 seconds to a minute. You can't stretch too much. Hold it for as long as you can. Because this is a deep stretch, you want to be very careful and slow coming out of it. So to come out of it, we want to bring our leg forward. We want to come back onto our stomach. We want to slowly bring that arm in and rest it. Now I'm going to do the other side in this same position. So my face is going to be away from you, but you'll be able to see what it looks like with my arm out. So let's do the other side. And to do that, we take our left arm in a T position. Then we roll on top of the shoulder. You'll feel that top leg come up and we're gonna rest it down and hold. to come out of it, we come back onto our stomach, we bring that arm in nice and slowly, we come up into our hands and knees so that we can make our way all the way up safely. Hi, I'm Jenny's dad. I'm lucky enough to be your dad, but I'm also lucky enough to be in this video today. I can't believe she asked me. Those of you that want to try to play good golf after you get a little older, I'm uh, 75. I kind of move slowly, but there's uh, a couple lot of things you can do. One is, first of all, is to listen to Jenny's videos and stay in shape. The other is, those of you who can get this book off you, uh, eBay or Amazon, it's called Golf Begins at 40 by Sam Sneed. And it's an excellent book that not only tells you how to think, but also how to manage your game and a few other stories about his life. But there's a few things in here that I want to read, and then I'm going to show you real quick. The most important is this little tip right here. And it says, first thing you wanna always do is strengthen your legs. When you lose your wheels, you forget about playing good golf. This is why in baseball, in spring training, they had the pitchers just run and run and run and run and run. They don't throw, they strengthen their legs. Same thing in golf, if you lose your leg power, your flexibility and your strength, you can forget about playing good golf. There's a couple little things I'll show you. And of course, the other one is improving your flexibility. And of course, Jenny has some great tips on that. But uh, one thing that I found is before you start, a lot of golfers run out to the golf course, they don't loosen up and they get out there and after about five holes, they start playing good. But if they would just take a couple of minutes to loosen up before playing, uh, this is all uh, you have to do to try to get loose. A lot of guys get up there and they rush, 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 but one thing I found is if you take a golf club and you put your head cover on it, and if you want a little bit more weight, just put a couple, couple of golf balls inside. You don't have to buy this $50 weighted swing and all this fancy stuff. Just get an old head cover and just get up 
And I always found that if you keep your legs together and just swing back and forth, it loosens up your hips and it loosens up your shoulders. And the two most important things in golf is your flexibility with your hips. Now, my legs are pretty bad. I had a left hip replacement. I also had a tumor on my spine, so my legs aren't strong, too, too strong anymore, but they do kind of work. You want to flex, and you also, the other thing is, you want to try to get up as high as you can to get that club parallel to the ground. Of course, as you get older, sometimes you only can get here. I have found that I can kind of get about here. Now, a couple little things that I would suggest you do, if you don't have that flexibility, is Jenny will give you some good exercises to loosen up your hips. And my problem is I can't, I can't, you want to try to get this hip almost to that position. And I can only get it about here. And if I can get it here, I'd hit it farther. The other problem is when you hit through the ball, you, you, you kind of want to get it so you're facing the target. When you threw, you're kind of facing the target. My problem is I can't get this hip around, <laughs> hip around to do that. So I kind of cheat on it, and a lot of old golfers do this. They find themselves able to twist and turn better if they take their feet and point them out like this. And you can see that you can rotate back and through the ball a little bit better. And what I do is I set up, and I always turn this left foot out towards the target. Then when I come back, it's easier for me when I swing through, rather than have my hips do all the turning, my foot is already in that position, and I can, all, all way, I can already follow through with my weight in that position there. It also helps to put your weight instead of directly over the ball, just to lean a little bit forward. And this way you're already almost in that position. Of course, the most important thing is to get started. And to get started, most golfers are real stiff. A good tip is use what's called the forward press. This just kind of gets your hands and legs and body started all at once. You just kind of take your hands and just kind of move them a little bit forward like that. And that starts everything in motion. Rather than jerk the club back like that, like most golfers do, and then hit the ground, if you do a little forward press, see that gets the hands and everything in position. So I can usually get right about here where I feel comfortable. And then this is what my swing would look like now at 75. So that's all there is to it. <laughs> Another little tip that might help is some of you that are fortunate enough to have a big yard, if you get real golf balls, I'm fortunate I have a horse farm right over there. And I, well, it's kind of like when I was young, I used to hit horses hit in the horse pasture uh, up in Maryland, but I missed and I'd hit the horses in the side. Here, there aren't any horses out here now, so I launch them up over the pasture over there. But those of you that don't have that yardage, get these small little plastic golf balls and hit those. They give you the same exercises and the same flexibility. That's it. <laughs> okay, so now um, I'm not a big golf player, but I, like to swing the golf clubs, so um, I'm gonna just get some helpful tips from my dad, and if this helps you, um, great. So, uh, Dad, if I were to do a few swings, I'm gonna get you to kind of comment on what you would change. Maybe a few more, and you can. Either my grip or my tempo or my hips or what do you think? All right, that's right. First thing is, notice her setup, okay? She's got a nice setup. She uses what's called the interlock grip, which is, you know, you can read about this in books, but the, the last two fingers just interlock. Tiger Woods used this, Jack Nish this. You know, that's good enough for me if they used it. About 95% of golfers use the overlip back grip, and then about 1% use the baseball bit grip. But notice a few things that I would recommend. Nice little bend at the waist, 
Don't bend at the knees. Put a little flexibility in your knees. Okay, kind of squat a little bit, not way down, but just kind of where you're loose. Notice when you sit up to the ball, notice you've got a nice line from your shoulder to the club. In other words, it's not bent in like this, okay? The, the, the arm doesn't go down and out, uh -huh. but if you take this hand off, notice there's a straight line from right here to the club, okay? Notice. This is what Jack Nicholas used to do. He used to put his shoulder and club straight down like this. Then he'd reach down with the other hand. What most golfers do is they stand up immediately. Get set up with the left arm. See how you, so when you get into the ball, you got all that strength and force going into the ball. Instead of at an angle, up or down, it's right like that. Then bend at the waist and put the other club down. Now. Pretend that there's like a golf tee or a ball about a foot behind it. Just come back low and slow over the ball, and then, then try to come back and up and around, twist in a barrel, okay? What a lot of golfers do, especially when they get older, is they slide like this, and they're gonna slide into the ball. You don't wanna do that. You wanna twist like in a barrel. That way you don't, you, you make better contact and more strength, okay? But it's harder to do as you get old. Jenny's real good at that. She twists in that barrel. Okay? Yep. Now come on up a little bit. Yeah. Now, when you get ready to come down, when you come down, this is the most important spot. What a lot of golfers do is they take the right hand and they use it and kind of like flip it through. And that's the worst thing you can do because you'll top it and hit behind it. What you want to do is get right in this position where you start down you can kind of you can kind of feel this kind of this position right here and what you want to do is pretend this is in that book by Sam Sneed for oh, there's the horses <laughs> he wants to get in the video there's, pretend that there's a knife blade at the bottom of the club and what you're going to do is when you get to this position you're going to stick it in the ground right there you're going to jab it down into the ground and then let the club come through so pull down and pull through. Try that. Ooh, I'm already worn out. <laughs> pull down and pull through. That's it. That's it. That's a lot better. See, that gives you a lot more strength. When you get to that position, pull down and through. That's it. You could be. Well, you could, and the thing I'm not good at, I'm learning, is, and I do the same thing in tennis, is I fall back. Yeah. So I try real hard to. Okay. Yep. Well, try this if you want. When you sit up, put a little bit more weight on your left foot. Okay. And turn the, the left foot out a little bit. Yeah, now feel your weight on your left side. Okay, now do your regular swing. Yeah. And that way you can... I, go ahead. No, I am no golfer, y'all. Yes, yeah, she is. She's good. <laughs> Maybe soon. Okay, I hope you enjoyed um, this personal training video. I know there's a lot of elements <laughs> to this video. I hope even a little part of it was helpful and um, I hope that you find this next little video entertaining. You'll see. Yeah, here's Jenny. <laughs>